Hello everyone, here's what's coming up tonight on News Center Now. Who killed Valerie Tiemann? The state says her husband pulled the trigger and buried her in a shallow grave, but Luke Tiemann's attorneys say he just wanted to help police find his missing wife. It looks like a thumb drive, but it packs the nicotine punch of an entire pack of cigarettes. What you need to know about your kids and jewels. Teamwork and like taking risks. Running isn't just a healthy hobby for these kids. It's a way to learn about determination and integrity. This is New Center Now. <laughs> What happened the day Valerie Tiemann disappeared? Prosecutors believe that she may have argued with her husband before he killed her. Hello, everybody. I'm Lee Goldberg. And I'm Lindsay Mills. Luke Tiemann began his defense today. Samantha York was in the courtroom. Sam, has the state laid out a motive? Well, Lee and Lindsay, no clear motive yet. However, prosecutors did point out that the last day anyone had contact with Valerie, she had been recently told that Luke was having an affair. Now, the state planted the seed that the two may have argued that evening, but it wasn't clear if there was any evidence to support that. Now, Prosecutors say Luke Tiemann changed his story multiple times. First, he said Valerie left him for another man, abandoning him at a local Walmart. But the prosecutors say Luke may have been the one having an affair. The last night Valerie contacted anyone, she called Luke 31 times, the same day that someone messaged her on Facebook saying Luke was cheating. Now, after police found Valerie's body, the state says Luke changed his story, now saying he watched her overdose on heroin and with the help of his brother would later bury her in his parents' backyard. Now, while the state started to lay down a timeline, the defense spent more time talking about the jury's job than the actual case. They said they agree with one thing that prosecutor said, though, that Tiemann cooperated with police to help them find his missing wife. Now, on top of all of this, the judge also ruled this morning not to allow the defense to present an alternate suspect to the jurors. So a very busy day here in court this afternoon. This morning, I'll have much more for you coming up tonight on New Center Main at 5.30 and 6. Lee and Lindsay, back to you. All right, Sam, thank you very much. Now, an autopsy report revealed that Valerie died of gunshot wounds to the head and the back. And Luke Tiemann spoke to New Center Main the day before her body was found and not far from where the discovery was made. My name is Luke Tiemann. It's September 19th, 2016. Luke Tiemann's wife had been reported missing for two weeks at this point. The 34-year-old combat veteran arranged for New Center Maine's Samantha York to meet him at his parents' property in Fairfield. How have you been? I haven't been... I've, I've been... <laughs> drinking water. The military trains you to save for life. <laughs> so... I've just been helping my folks out, moving wood, splitting wood, and um, I've done my own private searches. He says he went to look for her at the local homeless shelter. He also says he was working to get some dogs over here, referencing his parents' property. The site of where Valerie's body would be found the day after this interview. But at the time, he says he believes his wife could be camping. Because we camped a lot. Also at this point, Tiemann has told police he last saw her in a Walmart parking lot in Skowhegan. I thought I knew her until the last couple of weeks. She started saying some things, but I'm not going to say anything bad about her. I don't want her to feel scared. I don't want, like, no one's going to be after her. No one cares what she's done. Detectives say Tiemann made statements following his wife's death, reporting that he witnessed her die of an overdose, contradicting his initial claims she vanished from that parking lot. However, one day before her body was found in a shallow grave on this property, in case she was watching, Tiemann said this. You are loved and your, your family needs you and come back. An autopsy shows the 34-year-old died August 25th, nearly a month before this interview with Luke. He was arrested the day after her body was found. And for the latest developments from this trial, visit our website and mobile app.
So the view outside your window right now is very different than when you left for work this morning. Jess, <clears throat> that uh, S word <coughs> stuff, are we done with this now? <coughs> <coughs> it looks like we're done with it for today, but we still have a few more chances of some snow. I know, so sorry. Uh, right now though, you can see things have quieted down. This is a loop from the last 12 hours. So we did see a little bit of snow, uh, especially along the York and Cumberland County coast things now really winding down though. So good news, I think for most of us, a few clouds out there, but not too bad. Uh, it'll be partly cloudy overnight tonight. Temperatures stay fairly mild through the overnight hours tonight as well. Right now, 39 in Bangor, 35 in Rockland, 36 in Wiscasset, Portland right now at 37 degrees. It's not too bad out there, but it's definitely not as nice as it was yesterday. A pretty big temperature change between uh, last night and tonight. A little bit breezy, two winds right now, about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Wind gusts are a little bit higher, Again, not as windy as it was yesterday either. Things are really calming down now. Uh, not seeing too many gusts there. So the possibility is there though for some more snow tomorrow into early Wednesday, but then it looks like Wednesday warms up quite a bit. Yeah, we're not quite done with snow yet, but we'll talk about all of that coming up in just a bit. I did it and I was like, whoa, like this feels good for the two split seconds you have it. Uh, but then like researching it further, I was like, this is so bad for you. If you have a teenager and you do not know what a Juul is, <clears throat> excuse me, this story is for you. Juuling is the newest e-cigarette trend, easy to hide, and it comes in a crazy amount of flavors like peppermint and grape and peanut butter. Because there's no smoke, kids think that they're safe from cancer or lung disease, but one Juul cartridge has as much nicotine as an entire pack of cigarettes. South Portland Police and School Resource Officer Al Justo is here and he has information about what these things, how you can detect them and some information for parents of what they're going to need to look for. And he's not the only one because this happened also in Cape Elizabeth. The high school's vice principal recently spoke to the New York Times saying he catches kids vaping regularly. It's the only risky thing you can do in your life with little consequence in their mind to show that you're a little bit of a rebel. So. We're in the New York Times now, and I know this is something that's been going on at least, you know, for a little bit now in our schools. First of all, is it easy to detect? Can you catch your kids doing this without physically seeing them do it? It's difficult because it's a, if you see the jewel, it looks like a USB, right? So parents need to know what it looks like. When I first came across it this fall, I didn't know what it was. So from the time I was out of school from the end of July with summer school to fall, this jewel pen became available that kids were using. So I had to research it and figure out what it was. Is it a big deal? Do we need to be worried about this? Because it's only nicotine, there is no smoke. I mean, is this something that, that is harmful to the kids? Well, nicotine is, so nicotine's very harmful uh, to your brain development, Doesn't you don't develop to 25, right? So you have that, it gives the sensation, makes other drugs like alcohol and other drugs better. That's why there's always nicotine. You know, people smoke and drink a lot, they put, um, that together now recently in, in studies. So it's, it's just a problem. You, you wind up setting yourself up for further either addictions or because of the nicotine at an early age of the brain. If you wait longer, the research shows that if you wait longer to do nicotine, alcohol, or even smoke marijuana, less addictions uh, develop. And, and as, as you just learned about it, which is your job, <clears throat> your job to know, do parents know how prevalent this is? Because it seems like just myself having kids, you know, in this age group and, and talking with you, it seems like it's a lot bigger of a deal than I think maybe parents realize. Yeah, I don't think without, we have um, SOPO Unite, and we're trying to educate people in South Portland, and we put stuff out to the teachers that didn't know what to look for. So there is a sweet smell that, that goes with it. And so that, that helps, but it's not like a cigarette smell. So parents don't know the difference of maybe it's aftershave, perfume, cologne, versus like the smell of a cigarette, which they know. So there's that part. And so they need to kind of learn what they look like, what to look for, where they hide it. And the way the jewels work, you know, there's a, they have the, the pod and then they have the, where you charge it, right? So they just have that little black thing on them and it, they'll have no clue what it is. It just looks like it's some kind of goes into a charger so they won't know, so they need to see what it looks like to be aware of it. So real quick, the kids are under the impression that since there's no smoke, you're not lighting anything per se, that it's gotta be safer than cigarettes. That's obviously a misconception. 
Yeah, correct. The, all the research hasn't come out yet, but you're still taking nicotine into your system. And then all the other stuff that they're using, whether it's burned off or what goes into your lungs, that's the part they're doing more of the research on now. All right, how do the kids sneak this into school, and how, what are parents looking for at home? You have to look for, if you just look up vape pens, you look up the jewel, the jewel's very specific in its rectangular shape. Look that up, see what a pod looks like, see what the charger looks like. And so a lot of kids could bring in their, their own pods, which is really small, and then someone can have the charger, and then they could just share the charger with each other. So you don't have it, it's even smaller, easy right. to hide. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. We're gonna take your questions during the commercial break as well. So if you have any on Facebook, please stay tuned to that. Now the makers of Juul know that their product is making its way into classrooms and they know that it's not okay. Ashley Gould, who is the Chief Administration Officer for Juul, says the product is not for kids. Not only that, it's only designed for people already addicted to nicotine to help them quit smoking. She told the New York Times that kids may be juuling just because there's too much stress in their lives. So what, what do you think about that? I think one kid put it, it's, uh, it's like a new iPhone. I just got to try it. So it, it's something to try. It's something new. It's something different. Stress has something to do with it, yes, but it's also the new thing. The law has changed on cigarette smoking, so no longer do you get, if you get caught by police. Do you, we had a smokeless Saturday in South Portland Police Department. So in the beginning of the year when the jewels were around, less people when they got caught, they had to go there. Once that wasn't happening anymore with the law changing, that they were allowed to possess but not buy, then they ramped up more. So without having both the prevention and the law enforcement aspect, I think it's harder to combat. You know, to give them, you want to give them the education. Sure. All right. We're going to cut you off there, but we will continue taking questions on Facebook. That officially now is the last question. Linz? Excellent. All right, Lee, thanks so much. Well, lacing up your sneakers and pushing through a tough run can teach your kids a lot about endurance and perseverance. That's the philosophy behind a new program in Southern Maine. That's coming up. Also ahead, does your boss have the right to call you off the clock? Weigh in right now on our Facebook live stream where the conversation is just getting started. Coming up tonight on 207, managing editor for Down East Magazine, Brian Kevin is in our studio to talk everything from the coolest main prefab homes to finding fiddleheads, plus the boys of Bull Moose on 207. Welcome back everyone. We have a conversation going on right now on our Facebook live stream about the jewels, the, listen to me saying, the jewels. I sound like I'm, <laughs> how old am I, the right? Royalty. The yeah. jewels, but no, seriously, sure. we're talking about this, this new nicotine laced smoking device that kids are using in schools. And we just had a school resource officer in here to talk about it. We have Tammy asking on Facebook. She says, how do kids sneak them in? Police kids have been sneaking in real cigarettes and weed for generations. And what he was saying is it's so small, it looks like a USB drive that they keep it right in their hands and then they just take a quick puff and slip it in their pocket or toss it away and it's done. Right, and the problem that Officer Justo was referring to is you have to be 21 to buy them, but you do not have to be that old anymore to possess them. So that's an obviously kind of really gray area because if, the, if a child gets one from somebody who's, if you're 12 years old and, and you didn't buy it and somebody gave it to you, you're actually allowed to possess it mm -hmm. according to the new change in the state law, which obviously could create a whole bunch of problems. So. Sure. Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you so far for your comments. So you remember those pot cookies delivered to a Bangor daycare center? It turns out it was all sugar and baked goods, no marijuana included. In February, workers at the Watch Me Shine daycare said they felt intoxicated after eating cookies delivered by a parent. No kids ate the treats, but the results are in today, and the state crime lab found no evidence of any controlled substances in the cookies. Police have no idea why the staff felt intoxicated. All right, this is also another conversation we're having right now on our Facebook live stream. You get home from a long day at work, you're just starting to relax, and then your phone starts ringing. It's your boss, probably asking you to come back in or maybe work an extra shift the next day. So do you answer the phone? A new bill in New York City would make it illegal for your supervisor to punish you if you don't take the call while you're off the clock. It is okay for them to call you, but you do not have to answer. This would not apply to 24-hour jobs like first responders or in cases of emergencies. This got a lot of people 
talking on the Facebook. <laughs> exactly, the <laughs> Facebook. Jason says, unless my boss is calling to meet up for beers, don't call me. And if the boss man does call, he's logging it as overtime. Tom says he wants supervisors to call him anytime they have available shifts. He could use the hours. Vivian says it can be okay if it isn't every evening and then if they pay for your phone. With some jobs, working in the off hours is expected. Edward says the biggest problem here is that government is trying to tell people how to run their businesses. Lisa agrees. She's astounded it's gotten so bad that something like this has to be legislated. Well, Vivian makes a great point. Uh, if the company pays for your phone, I mean, I feel like there has to be at least some type of understanding that if they try to reach you, you're at least relatively available to at least respond. Maybe you can't come in, maybe you can't do what they need, right. but they're paying for your phone, therefore have the right to try to get in touch and with you. And a heads up just goes a long way. So maybe if they're calling to give the heads up about something, that could be much appreciated. You know what else is appreciated? <laughs> Warm temperatures. <laughs> your thermometer might hit it's 60 degrees oh, this that week. Sound nice, but we gotta get through some other messy stuff out there tomorrow night. Just we'll have the details when we come back. There is a national program that has found its way to Maine, and the kids taking part are extremely pumped. Oh, yes, they are. So are the actual adults, too. <laughs> it's called Hero Boys. It mirrors a very successful program that elementary school girls have been taking part in for quite a while now. For years now, girls all across the country have taken part in the very successful and confidence-building program, Girls on the Run. Now, there's a similar program available for third through fifth grade boys. I was actually looking at Girls on the Run. I'm like, can I help them out somehow? I know I'm not that gender, but um, I was looking into it, and then Amy Breyer, uh, she came up to me with this Hero Boys program, and it was perfect. One, two, three, Hero Boys! Small elementary school in South Portland is the first in Maine to take part in the program where HERO stands for Honor, Endure, Run, Overcome. 25 kids have signed up so far, and for those who used to watch Girls on the Run, this is a more than welcome addition. I was jealous because I couldn't run it, and my mom made me help her like on the day of the races. While the core of the program involves running, there are some very teachable moments built into the eight week long curriculum as well. Like teamwork, how to become a leader, taking risks, sportsmanship. The coaches sat through an hour of specialized training and the school has to pay to take part in Hero Boys. For those involved, the life lessons are well worth the cost. Success is really relative to the, to the person and I really want the kids also to kind of see that you can lead by example. So you'll notice in the video of the kids running today, there were white things falling from the sky. And they <laughs> no were, one's they were, allowed to yell at me. They were wet. I'm not yelling. <laughs> this is my whispering voice. I just wanted you to notice that, that, might be scarier. that the yeah. children suffered today <laughs> running in the <laughs> snow. Oh, and Jess is here with the weather. Didn't even stick, Jess. That's all. That's all no, I'm saying. It, it didn't, didn't even stick. It, it was actually pretty warm Look at out the window right now. <laughs> it's right. sunny. It's yeah. bright. So Whatever fell so through the sky is <laughs> long melted <laughs> away now. Yeah, but we have another chance of snow <laughs> tomorrow. And not, look at this beautiful uh, uh. right now in Portland. Yeah, another <laughs> chance of snow tomorrow night into early Wednesday. Uh, not helping my case at all. But it's good to be with you guys. Anyways, <laughs> current temperatures right now. Uh, most of us in the upper 30s, 40 right now in Waterville, 37 in Portland, 39 right now in Bangor, 35 in Rockland. So temperatures definitely nowhere near as warm as they were yesterday. Matter of fact, some of us about 15 degrees cooler than we were yesterday evening at this same time. A beautiful Easter Sunday today. It got cooler. Of course, we had the snow. A couple snow flurries there picking up on the mid coast, but now things have really quieted down. We'll see partly cloudy skies overnight tonight. Temperatures will be able to cool off a little bit more. And then as we get into tomorrow afternoon and evening, maybe another chance at some snow. This is for uh, tonight. Again, you can see the temperatures drop upper 20s, lower 30s for the most part overnight tonight. As we get into tomorrow morning, we'll start off in the low to mid 30s. You can see those clouds really thickening up. Certainly as we head into tomorrow afternoon, they will continue to increase. And then as we get into tomorrow evening, you can see a little bit of snow. Most of it will be in the mountains and in northern Maine. But don't be surprised to see a little bit of snow right after the evening commute, after around dinner time, uh, even in the greater Portland area. The good news is this is a warm front coming through, so temperatures will warm up quite a bit. 
as we go overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. And then Wednesday's high temperatures will be pretty nice. We'll warm up on Wednesday afternoon into the upper 50s and lower 60s. Having some trouble clicking here, Ryan. Never mind, I got it, I got it, we're good. Uh, by Wednesday afternoon, we are gonna warm up a little bit more. Temperatures aren't catching up, there we go. Uh, upper 50s and lower 60s, however, even with the warm temperatures, unfortunately, it's going to be a pretty rainy day. But take what you can get, I guess, with this, at least we're not getting snow. And then as we head into the day on Thursday, it's gonna, going to be much cooler. We will be uh, in the 20s as we get into Thursday afternoon. As far as the snow goes, not a lot of snow accumulation unless you're in far northern Maine, could see around two to five there. Then as we go into the day on Thursday, again, not too bad, mostly clear skies. It's as we get into Friday and into Friday night, another chance at some snow. We're still seeing snow, it's still April. Ryan's gonna talk about how the possibility of some April snow coming up in a little bit. But by next week, we're watching this other storm right now, though it looks like it'll stay uh, off to our south. So maybe some good news there. Here's the marine forecast for you. Uh, there's gale watch in effect from Wednesday afternoon through Thursday morning. And taking a look at your extended forecast, yeah, that just a little chance for snow Tuesday night into Wednesday. Uh, very mild for the day on Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday much cooler. Another chance at a couple of flakes on Friday. You know what? Something for everybody. I know. These next it, few days. That's true. That's a great it's way a, to look at it, Lindsay. Bag, Thank so. you. It's always nice to see you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Just. You may not like what you say, but we always like to see you. Just there there you go. Sport. All right. See, there's that <laughs> full. All right, thank you. So we told you about Luke Tiemann's defense in court today, but that's just one of three high-profile murder cases happening in our state right now. Tonight on New Center Main at 530, accused child killers Julio and Sharon Carrillo say they did not beat 10-year-old Marissa Kennedy to death. We'll have details in the next half hour. Also ahead, a massive fire in Biddeford at a Biddeford apartment building. Officials still trying to make sure every tenant is accounted for. More now when we come back. Ryan Brett, right. dropping some rain. Are you done with snow? Uh, yes, sir. I think a lot you of could people ask me are. In December, though. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, in recent Aprils, we've actually had measurable snow the last five Aprils. So I was wondering, how often does it not snow and accumulate in April? And we have 135 Aprils on record in Portland, and it turns out that it's about one in four Aprils have no snow. So we're actually due for a snowless April. And I think today we'll go in the books as zero in terms of accumulation. So I know Jess was talking about a little more snow that comes in tomorrow night into early Wednesday. But, but that wasn't on the coast. No, So it's that would keep this record at least intact. Right. right. And even in the Aprils that it does snow, only one year have we seen uh, more than 20. So. Uh, there was supposed to be opening day uh, for the Yankees today, the Mets today, both canceled because of snow. Six inches. The Red Sox opened at home on Thursday, right. so no snow Thursday. No, and they only got an inch, so okay. it'll be all good. So we're we okay with that? You promise? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. He, he promised. All right, guys. Go Sox. New Center at 530. Starts right now.